So in this video, we're going to go through the object ID pass, or some people refer that to clown pass or cryptomat pass. Okay. So if you want to know what it is, the ID pass or the object ID pass is something that looks like this. Okay. So it's just a flat color. Okay. Um, that will be assigned to the object in a scene. So let's say you have a scene like this, right, with the teapot and the sphere and some cylinder, the object ID will assign a different color to all the object in the scene. Now, the reason why we're doing this is that, let's say you want to change some color or make some color adjustment to your object. In this case, maybe it's a teapot, right? By using this object ID, you can easily select that uh, teapot object. Okay, so this green represent all the mass or the mat for the teapot and you can make the selection in software like photoshop or after effects and then you can proceed with the color adjustment accordingly okay so this is pretty like a useful render path that you can use and again if i have a room like this and i want to i want to make a changes to the blanket okay so i can easily just select this blue because this blue color represent the blanket object in the scene okay so by utilizing this render render id pass i can easily make like color adjustment based on this uh yeah, contrast color that we have in the object id pass okay now going back to the blackboard you need to download the same smooth file right open up in maya okay and just remove all the zdef that we did okay or just re download the fresh new scene from the blackboard okay go ahead and open up and do a render so the object id pass required to have some master layer render okay so this is what i get when i render okay nothing special now for you to activate the crypto map or the object ID pass, you need to use AOV. Okay, so go ahead to the AOV tab and click crypto map. Okay, just need to click add and you're gonna get something like this. Okay, and go ahead and click the error, right? And go to the ID type. Now, I'm just gonna be focusing on this node name, material name. And the object ID okay so if you choose node name this is something what you're gonna get okay go ahead and render and switch to crypto map now everything looks very colorful because redshift will look at all the object in the scene okay and they will look at its name right so this head is different name from this body Okay, and they will assign like different color. Same thing with the eyeball. So this eyeball and his left eyeball also different name. Okay, and they will assign a uh, different color. Okay, so they will look at your naming convention basically. So every time they see a different name, right, or your unique name, they will assign different color. Now you can see like this blue on this particular smooth. Oops. Right, it's very similar to that one, but it's actually different. Right, this type, this kind of blue, and that kind of blue is different. Okay, because they have a different name. Now, again, they will keep uh, doing that until it's finished, and that's why you get a different color for each different object when you're using not name. Okay, now, if you you are using material name and you render. Then you'll get something like this okay you probably can guess right so this setting we look at the material right that is being assigned to the object so you can tell this papa smith is using the same material for his head and his pants and his tongue right so when redshift look at it or oh, they will assign it the same type of blue for his head the tongue 
and the pens. Okay. Same thing with the Smurf. So all the Smurf are using the same material for the head. That's why like you're gonna get the same blue for his head and his pants. Right? Same thing with the skin. Okay, the skin, they're all the same material. And when you look at the ID pass, it's all the same type of blue. Okay, so that's what material name will look like. Now, um, what about object ID? Well, each object, right, in Redshift will have an ID. Okay, so go ahead and render. Okay, so by default, uh, your one should have the same color. But in my one, okay, I already assigned ID. So if you look at your object in the scene, so let's say like um, a head, right? This Papa Smurf head, I think by default, all object has ID of zero. Okay, so this one, and if you render, you'll get something like this. Okay, everything's blue. Now, if you want to use object ID, right? Uh, you must assign a number. So let's say like I want to have a different color for his Papa Smooth head. I can put some number there. Let's put one, right? And for the ground, let's put two. And when I render, right, I'll get a different kind of blue. Okay, so that's how object ID works. So you have to assign a value to the object ID. So Redshift can assign a different color for that. Okay, otherwise everything will be one color. Okay, now, the question is, like, so which one uh, to use? Okay, so it really depends on the project and what you need. Okay, sometimes, like, you need not name, right? Sometimes you need just the material name. Okay, so it's really different uh, requ uh, requirement, right? It really ups, uh, depends on what you need. Okay, so in this particular example, I probably just need to use material name, okay, because it's just for demo purposes, okay. So again, once I render this to material name, I'm going to save it as an ID pass, okay. So I'm going to replace it, and also don't forget to save your master layer as well, okay. Um, go ahead and open in Photoshop. So this is my master layer. And I'm going to open up my ID. Okay, so again, I'm going to copy my ID to the master layer, right? And I'm going to unlock my master layer. Now, let's say I want to make some changes to his head, right? Uh, to the head. Okay, so there are two ways you can use the magic wand selection. So I think 128 is too big for its tolerance. So I'm going to probably select uh, maybe smaller value, okay, something like that. Oh, this is more like a manual way selecting. Whereas if I use my color range, right, it will select whatever blue uh, are present in the scene. So this kind of blue, if it's present in the scene, it will keep um, selecting it. Maybe like this eyeball also, this also, right, that will keep selecting that type of blue. You can also control like how much radius it should be uh, selecting, but if you select uh, too little, then you're gonna have pretty much jagged line. Okay, so you can control that using the fuzziness. Okay, so I'm gonna select the crypto mat color range. Select this type of blue. Let's increase to somewhere around around here maybe. Okay, and again, um, don't forget that everything else are also being selected. So I need to deselect that. Okay, so I'm pressing L or lasso and Alt to deselect and deselect. Okay, make sure his tongue also not selected. And this little guy, okay, also deselect. And a bit of, oops, a bit of his eyeball also need to be deselect. Okay, so once the head and the pants are selected, I want to change its color. Okay, so another important thing of using a crypto mat is that if you want to change color or do some color adjustment, you don't have to go back to Maya and re-render because re-rendering again takes times and it's not uh, cheap, right? 
So what I do is I'm using this cryptomat to help me just select particular region and just change the color. Okay, I want to press Control U to change the saturation, maybe a bit more purple, right? Something like that. And once you're happy, you're done. Okay, so I can easily change color without having to re-render the whole thing. Okay, so this is one of the useful feature if you use CryptoMat passes.